Looky, Darren's got a new toy. It's the Ryobi, the Ryobi, say it how you want, pressure washer. Now, the saying is size matters. Well, size does matter. And in this moment, smaller is actually better. Because if you accept that whatever you're gonna be pressure washing, in this case for me, will be the wheels of my car, it's naturally work. You do not wanna make your life any more difficult than it already is going to be. Therefore, in this moment, size matters and I want smaller. This is incredibly compact. It's powerful, 1600 PSI. Trust me, you don't need to overthink that part. I love it that it's electrical so I don't have to hear a stupid gas powered engine going whether I'm using my pressure washer or not. So when I'm not using this, guess what? I'm not hearing any noise. I like that part. So let me add a few tips along the way. I'm gonna add a few tips about the pressure washer itself and cleaning a wheel specifically. Why? Because, well, my wheels are dirty and they need cleaning. So when it comes to pressure washer, what I recommend is first off, you just accept that it's gonna be work. And what I mean about that specifically is that you're going to want to jump to the chase and just start cleaning whatever it is you're gonna be cleaning. But you've got a few things to manage. You've got three components or three lines to manage. You've got the electrical, you've got the hose that connects to your wand, and then you've got the inlet hose that connects to your water source. So that's three lines which may overwhelm some of you automatically because you'll say, well, a gas powered engine, I don't have to manage anything like the electrical. Yeah, but you're still managing two lines. So the trade-off, not hearing the noise and finding an electrical source, to me, well worth it. Never mind, find me a gas-powered pressure washer that is that light. So lay out your hoses because they're gonna tend to wad up on you, tangle up. So if you can just manage your hoses at the beginning, you're gonna save yourself a lot of aggravation in the process of doing your wet work with the water. And based on your circumstances, you may need to manage that water so it doesn't dry on the moment. So you're not gonna to wanna to have to wrestle with your hoses and your cord any more than is necessary. Now that you've got everything hooked up, including the power, it's plugged in, but this machine is not on yet. What you wanna do is check that your nozzle is in completely. This is a quick release, which means that you may put this in and you think that it's fully engaged when it's not. So you wanna make sure that that quick release is fully engaged. I'm using the 15 um, degree wand for this one and I want to prime it. What I wanna do is get all the air out of the line. So you're listening, see right there? That's some air in the line. So what would happen when I turn this machine on and it pressurizes and now suddenly it hits a big area of air, it's gonna do things that you don't want it to do. So I want to fully bleed this and make sure all the air is out of it. Wait for it. Now, I turn it on, it engages, it charges up. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, baby. So let's clean a wheel. This is, and by the way, you'll have to look at my website. It'll show you all the cleaners that I use. One of the unique characteristics of trying to clean a wheel is not that it's just round or that it comes in endless configurations, but it moves. Now, that's an obvious, but what I want to apply is some context, which means that you will spend all this time and energy cleaning your wheel, detailing your wheel, and then you drive it. And now, everything that is facing down that way that your eye cannot see from here will suddenly be revealed. So you're at this perspective looking down, maybe you'll crouch down if you're really limber, and you'll try to see these angles that are not exposed from looking up here, you will not get it perfectly. So you're gonna have to be very disciplined initially so that when you do roll it, you'll have less dirt to touch up with because I promise you, you will not be able to nail it 100%. I actually challenge myself each and every time to see if, hey, I wonder if Darren can nail it 100% this time when he rolls his wheel and reveals the other side if in fact he doesn't have to do any touching up. Cool thing with the pressure washer 
if you have good saturation, is that it will use the velocity of pressurized water. So what the trade-off is, in a good way, is you're using less volume of water, but you're getting pressure in the process delivered in the form of velocity. I want to make sure I get good saturation. And that's one of the things about wheels also, is that you will go through a disturbing amount of wheel cleaner trying to get your wheels clean, which is another reason I default to an all-purpose type of cleaner, way more economical. You'll notice how I tip the wand up this way to try to get these angles that aren't exposed to my eye from my particular perspective right now. And I'm scrubbing these and see dirt's not coming off, which is a great sign. It means I was pretty darn effective at saturating the wheel. You also must note that I keep these wheels up on a very consistent basis. I do not allow the brake dust to remain and linger and damage and destroy my wheels. But if you want to employ the use of additional tools, because let's say you have what's called deferred maintenance and you have not been uh, consistent with your wheel cleaning duties, you can employ the use of some brushes like I do. Yes, they are laying on the ground. It's a non-issue. Two reasons, this is cement, it's not gravel, it's not even asphalt. These brushes are nylon and they're individual bristles. They don't even pick up dirt or debris in the process. I still apply a little bit of caution, but it's not one of those things I have to completely overthink. This is what's called a vent brush. Uh, you can see all this stuff at my website if you wanna go there. It's cool because it's got this rubberized tip, so if I jab my wheel, it's not gonna do any damage. It'll allow me to clean the inside of the wheel barrels. This brush, uh, it's a boar's hair, allows me to clean inside the lug nuts, which if I want clean, and I do, I want everything to be clean. Then I've got this bottle brush, which is great for the inside of my spokes. If in fact that there's any buildup that's not coming off with just the cleaner and the pressure washer, which really in this case, I don't need to do that. One of the many beauties of a pressure washer. I'm also, because this is an all-purpose cleaner, it's got a natural degreaser to it, I'm going to clean my side walls. And this brush, it's a stiff nylon brush, so I'm going to reserve it only for the tire itself. It's not for my wheel. Since I don't get my car wet, I don't wash it in the traditional sense, I'm only gonna get this area wet, my wheel, my tire, inside the wheel well, I'm good to go. Now I'm gonna blow it off with a leaf blower to remove all the standing water, so then I can finesse the very end and take it from a 99% clean to that 100% level of perfection. Okay, uh, I will close there. Uh, a couple notes, one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, when I load these up to YouTube, I am going to disable the ads that play during the video. So there won't be any more interruptions. You'll just have to endure some of the stupid ads at the very beginning and then at the very end. But the main content, the main body of the video, I'm gonna keep it ad free for you guys because I know how annoying those stupid ads are. And based on what your search history is, they're going to implement ads based on that. They're going to laser target your emotions and try to figure out a way to separate you from more of your money. Okay, I think I'll close there. Uh, with that said, uh, please leave any comments below that you would like to throw my way. I will do my best to get to them as often as I can. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video.